Hi, my name is Rati Girish. Um, I am 37 years old. Can you believe it? Hi, I'm Janvi. I'm 32 years old. Um, I work as a consultant and um, yeah, I've been a Mumbaiker. Excited to be here. I'm an independent uh, writer, a voiceover artist, a mom to two human beings and one four-legged being. Oh, I, I just wanted to hear somebody else uh, talk about a subject that I don't really think about anymore. I'm just as honest as I can be. And like I said, I love, you know, being on camera and talking about stuff. So yeah, that, that, that works in my favor. What's your love story? So. Once I turned 25, my dad started putting out these ads on these websites. Right. So it's a very professional setup, right? Sure. They have these magazines and it just passed on from one family to another. And you've got these horoscopes in there, you've got, you know, wanted bride, wanted groom, that sort of thing. So yeah, so that's how, um, you know, like his rishta came to my house. Okay. Um, long story short, um, so we met, we first met in June and we were married in Jan. Oh, wow. Yeah. <laughs> Um, so mine is not really a very straightforward love story but I mean there's a little bit of a twist because I actually knew my husband when I was a kid. Janam, you know? janam, janam. <laughs> <laughs> so I was in Spain, I was doing my PhD and I had put out this Facebook post which said uh, I wish there was some food here which, which had spice in it because I'm kind of tired of eating the oh same thing over and over again. So he sent me a message because he used to live in Spain and he sent me a message saying, hey, you know what, I know a few places that you may actually like and that's how we started talking. That's so story. it's like a, a longish love story. Yeah, it's a longish <laughs> love story. <laughs> how did your friends and family react to your decision? <laughs> this is a good one. So I was in the middle of my PhD and um, the first question my mom asked is, what about your PhD? <laughs> And my parents also were really happy because I, they knew that I was happy. You know, right. That I had made a choice that uh, I felt very confident about. So, um, so when I announced that this is the person I was going to marry, two of my closest friends were in a relationship at that time, you know, with their respective husbands now. Hmm. And they were like, but you don't know him. But are you sure? And he's so far away, you haven't even met him. Is this going to be right for you? Are you sure? Like, how do you know? And I just said, I don't, but I was met with a lot of, are you sure? Yeah. You know, and then of course, like now years later, it's, it's, things have changed. Of course know? I have, <laughs> of co and how. Yeah, yeah, and how. Uh, I chose this because, you chose, I guess, to, to have a love marriage because. I guess this, this is a layered answer. I mean, yes, I chose to be with my life partner, but even arranged marriages are a choice. I mean, they're not forced marriages as sometimes how, um, you know, Western culture see arranged marriages. So I think everybody has a choice. Mm. Um, but there's also an element of things uh, falling in place when they do. So we were raised, my sister and I, we were raised um, saying, you know, this is what's going to happen. You're going to be 25. We're going to have, an, you know, we're going to start looking out for you. Right. And so you grow up like that and it becomes a sort of like ego thing for your parents, you know, right. like my daughter listened to me and had an arranged marriage, found the guy that we chose for her, right. that sort of thing. So it was just, at that point in time, I was just like, yeah, okay, go ahead, do whatever you want. Yeah. And even when you're having an arranged marriage, it's not like your dad chooses or your dad and mom choose somebody for you right. and you're like, yeah, that's the guy you got to marry. Right. I must have seen like 45 profiles, oh, really? met 20 plus men. Hmm. Uh, and f until I finally found the one I want to marry. So it's not like, so I pretty much like you could say, you know, saw 20 people, yeah. had a conversation with them, met them for coffee. Just, they just didn't seem right. But right. suddenly, you know, this person comes along and you're like, okay, there's something here you yeah. want to explore. The biggest hurdle I've had to face is... So I think it was, it was a more mental thing. So the funny thing is, um, so the Tamil Brahmin community, 90% of the grooms are in the US. Oh. And that was a country I did not want to go to. <laughs> um, so when I found one who was living in Germany, I said, oh, somebody who, you know, chose a different country. I was like, oh, wow, travel Europe, you know, sort of. So we did all of that. And then we were in Germany for a year before we got an offer to move to the US. <laughs> <laughs> At that point in time, it was, it was more, I have to be in India, my career, my career, my career. That was my identity sort. Right. It, was, it was like sort of who I was. Mm. 
and just to break that and to take this you know this leap into something completely unknown right. and in the last 10 years to do stuff that you know I'm actually good at uh, more than what I had studied to do right. you know so uh, what I was trained to do it's just it's just been amazing so to get over that yeah. that mental block yeah. that was that was a big hurdle so the biggest hurdle for us was the long distance right. because we both had you know competing uh, professional priorities at that point um, and we realized that this is something that we just have to power through oh my lowest low has been the lowest low was um, when i found out that i had to move back to spain right after we got married i think it was a really low point when i found out my advisor was really sick and uh, I was like, finally, we get to be together in the same place. But in two months, I had to pack my bags and leave. And especially when you have an arranged marriage, every day is sort of a learning process because right. you've basically just corresponded on email and phone and text before. When you're finally living with that person, you're like, oh, he's not as clean as I thought he would be. And he's not as, you know, tidy and he doesn't know how to cook and he hates whatever, something that you love. Right. And just... Um, you know, it was just a lot of this initially, a lot of friction initially, like the first month, uh, we must have just had so many of these like, you know, small little fights. And at the end of that month, I was just like, okay, this is this has got to stop, you know, we're here, we're away from family, there's nobody I can complain to. And it's just, so that was like a really low point at that time, if I can uh, remember it correctly. And it's just, um, and we just had, had a conversation, you know, saying, listen, we've got to start getting to know each other. We've got to start working off of each other's strengths and sort of build each other up because if we want this to work it's going to have to be like that because literally we're all that we have my greatest high has been wow <laughs> um so i think the greatest high has been that we've been able to connect on such a level with three of our kids we have a dog and two sons and it's they are our greatest joys because we just we always see eye to eye when it comes to those three you know i don't know how we don't agree on anything else but we see eye to eye when it's those three. And it's it's just weird because it shouldn't be that way. You know, <laughs> I don't know how. It, it just shouldn't work out that way. Right. But it has. And it's just such a high when we have these... So we celebrate parenting wins now. And it's just it's just been a, it's been a journey, you know, right. from getting to where we were, that lowest low, to just celebrating the three of our kids. It's, yeah, I would say that's a high. Hi. I guess for us, it's traveling the world together. Wow. I think that's been awesome. Um, I remember, um, so I was in South America on a fellowship and um, he visited me wow. in um, Cusco and we went to Machu Picchu together. So that was like literally high. <laughs> like <laughs> we've been to these really cool restaurants after having researched so much and had these experiences together, you know, which is, which makes like, we have all these pictures from all these different places and I'm like, oh my God, I, I feel like, um, you know, it's, it's nice to have, um, you know, your best friend be a participant of something fun, you know. So we've been there for each other when we are having our own individual highs, which is fabulous. One thing I was wrong about. I was wrong about everything. I was wrong about uh, the way in which I thought a love marriage would be, meaning that uh, I thought everything will be hunky-dory and that, you know, oh, you know, I, it'll be like all sing and dance. I don't know. I guess I had the wrong expectation in general about um, marriage. Uh, so I was wrong about that. However, I was right about the fact that if you find the right person and you trust each other, you're able to, you know, get, get through so much together. Um, what was I wrong about? I, I guess it would be uh, my whole idea of... Um living what, what my in-laws would expect. I was brought up to think that these are the expectations uh, uh, you know, a daughter-in-law has and on her and this, these are the things that she's got to do and you've got to be a certain way, you've got to be this, that. Uh, that's wrong. Uh, my in-laws are great. They just... Uh, so it's nothing like what I thought I was supposed to be right. doing, you know? So that, that was one big thing and um, other than that, it's just... It's just I just thought it would be a lot more effort, a lot more work to be put into this right. and it hasn't been. It's just been us making our own rules as we go and you know, uh, living by our own stuff and doing what's comfortable for us and not really caring about what everybody else is thinking. 
if you could switch places, would you? Yeah, why not? Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, there was nobody on the horizon then, so you know, yeah. why not? You know, your story is just amazing. Uh, if that could happen to me, why not? You yeah, know? yeah. I I absolutely think um, love marriages don't have sometimes is um, this idea of compromise. Right. You know, I think that. Um, I think I guess I never mentioned this before, but uh, the truth is that every marriage is a compromise. Whether it's love, arrange, whatever mm-hmm. other different you know tags you want to give it, you have to compromise for the other individual, which is why you're married. And um, I think that that's something that I wish someone had told me. <laughs> what do you envy about the person sitting in front of you? Ah, I guess I, I don't envy, but I really admire the, your clarity of thought. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I just I just like the fact that you're able to clearly articulate a lot of things. Um yeah. It's it's I really admire that. Wow. Thanks, yeah. <laughs> I mean, I often feel like I don't have clarity of thought. So that's good that somebody else is seeing it in me. <laughs> I mean, South America, Spain, the US Bay Area, uh where have you not been? You know, it's like the very fact that you know you were able to have that strength of your relationship to say I to have that long distance relationship yeah. that's that's fantastic but I don't think I'll ever be able to do that that's so early on in your relationship yeah. to have that strength to do it and to travel these different countries uh with him yeah to you know be traveling with your best friend that's such a lovely thing to say my choice makes me feel <laughs> my choice makes me feel I mean I've been married 10 years so my choice makes me feel now that I'm glad I made it you know anything could have gone wrong with my choice as well right uh, but 10 years down the line i think uh it was one of the best things that i did and i just went with went for it on a gut feeling and i think it's yeah i'm just glad i did uh so i guess uh i feel that it i i feel very fortunate that he and i have a connection where we are able to kind of talk to each other as friends when things are not going well and talk to each other um and share really fun things with each other because you know very each other's best friend. Yeah. So. so this was fun, wasn't it? Can it was we? it was a really really <laughs> it was a total ball. I I didn't know what to expect coming in, yeah. but Rati it was awesome connecting with you, getting to know your story and yeah, I think that it's two women connecting and you know kind of sharing. Did you think a uh, arranged marriage could have this much, you know, romance in it? Absolutely. <laughs> I always knew that. <laughs> Romance is between two people, right? <laughs> the type of marriage has nothing to do with it. It was just so much fun to have this chat. I think, yeah, between three has been it's been fun. Yeah, them, no? I know. Yeah. Matchmaker. <laughs>